Dear people watching and listening, Assalamu alaikum. Kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please support my channel by contributing to my Patreon account so that I can continue making such videos for you. Start of Part 4 Al Quran, the Miracle of Miracles. Start of Chapter 1 A Standing Challenge. Say, if the whole of mankind and jinns were to gather together, to produce the like of this Quran, they could not produce the like thereof. Even if they backed up each other, with help and support. Holy Quran, Surah Bani Israel, Chapter 17, Verse 88. What is a miracle? I think it is necessary that we have a clear picture of what we mean by a miracle. Here are some definitions. An event that appears so inexplicable by the laws of nature that it is held to be supernatural in origin or an act of God. A person, thing or event that excites admiring awe, an act beyond human power, an impossibility. It is logical that greater the impossibility, greater the miracle. For example, should a person expire before our very eyes and is certified dead by a qualified medical man, Yet later on a mystic or a saint commands the corpse to arise and to everybody's astonishment, the person gets up and walks away. We would label that as a miracle. But if the resurrection of the dead took place after the corpse had been in the mortuary for three days, then we would acclaim this is a greater miracle. And if the dead was made to arise from the grave decades or centuries after the body had been decomposed and rotted away, then in that case we would label it the greatest miracle of them all. A Common Trait It has been a common trait of mankind since time immemorial that whenever a guide from God appeared to redirect their steps into the will and plan of God, they demanded supernatural proofs from these men of God instead of accepting the message of its merit. For example, when Jesus Christ peace be upon him, began to preach to his people, the children of Israel, to mend their ways and to refrain from their legalistic formalism and imbibe the true spirit of the laws and commandments of God. His people demanded miracle from him to prove his bona fides, as recorded in the Christian scriptures. Then certain of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would have a sign, miracle from thee, but he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, miracle, and there shall no sign, miracle, be given to it, but the sign, miracle, of the prophet Jonah's. Holy Bible, Matthew, chapter 12, verse 38 and 39. Though on the face of it, Jesus, peace be upon him, refuses to pamper the Jews here. In fact, he did perform many miracles as we learn from the Gospel narratives. The Holy Bible is full of supernatural events accredited to the prophets from their Lord. In reality, all these signs and wonders and miracles were acts of God. But since those miracles were worked through His human agents, we describe them as the miracles of prophets, that is Moses or Jesus by whose hands they were performed. Quirk continues. Some 600 years after the birth of Jesus Christ, السلام, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of God, was born in Mecca in Arabia. When he proclaimed his mission at the age of 40, his fellow countrymen, the mushriks of Mecca, made an identical request for miracles, as had the Jews from their promised Messiah. Textbook style. It was as if the Arabs had taken a leaf from the Christian records. 
history has a habit of repeating itself. وَقَالُوا And they say, لَوْ لَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ آيَاتٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِ Why are not signs sent down to him from his Lord? Holy Quran, Surah an kabut Chapter 29, Verse 50 Signs? What signs? Miracles? Cries he, what miracles would you have? Are not you yourself there? God made you, shaped you out of a little clay. Ye were small ones. A few years ago ye were not at all. Ye have beauty, strength, thoughts. Ye have compassion on one another. Old age comes on you, and grey hairs. Your strength fades into feebleness. Ye sink down and again are not. Ye have compassion on one another. They struck me much. Allah might have made you having no compassion on one another. How had it been then? This is a great direct thought, a glance at first hand into the very fact of things. On Heroes and Hero Worship and the Heroic in History by Thomas Carlyle. This struck me much. This, that, ye have compassion on one another impressed Thomas Carlyle most from his perusal of an English translation. I presume the verse that motivated this sentiment is, one, and among his signs is this, that he created for you mates from among yourselves, that ye may dwell in tranquility with them, and he has put love and mercy between your hearts. Verily in that are signs for those who reflect. Holy Quran, Surah Rum, Chapter 30, verse 21. Translation by Yusuf Ali. 2. And one of his signs it is that he hath created wives for you or your own species, that ye may dwell with them, and hath put love and tenderness between you. Herein truly are signs for those who reflect. Translation by Rev. J. M. Rodwell, M. A. 3. By another sign he gave you wives from among yourselves, that ye may live in joy with them, and planted love and kindness into your hearts. Surely there are signs in this for thinking men. Translation by N. J. Dawood. The first example is from the translation by A. Yusuf Ali, a Muslim. The second is by a Christian priest, the Reverend Rodwell. And the last example is by an Iraqi Jew, N. J. Dawood. Unfortunately, Thomas Carlyle had no access to any one of these because none of them had seen the light of day in his time. The only one available to him in 1840 was as he said on page 85 of his book under reference. We also can read the Quran. Our translation of it by sale is known to be a very fair one. Taint is the motive. Carlyle is very charitable to his fellow countrymen. The motives of George Sale, who pioneered an English translation of the Holy Quran, was suspect. He makes no secret of his antagonism to the Holy Book of Islam. In his preface to his translation in 1734, he made it known that it was his avowed intention to expose the man Muhammad and his forgery. He records, who can apprehend any danger from so manifest a forgery? The Protestants alone are able to attack the Quran with success, and for them, I trust Providence has reserved the glory of its overthrow. George Sale. And he set to work with his prejudiced translation. You will be able to judge how fair and scholarly George Sale was from the very verse which struck Carlyle much. Compare it with the three examples already given by a Muslim, a Christian, and a Jew. And of his signs another is, that he created for you, out of yourselves, wives that he may cohabit with them, and hath put love and compassion between you. I do not think that George Sale was a male chauvinist pig of his day to describe our mates, wives or spouses as sexual objects. He was only keeping to his promise, which Carlyle overlooked. The Arabic word which he, Sale, perverted is litaskunu, which means to find peace, consolation, 
composure and tranquility and not cohabit meaning to live together in a sexual relationship when not legally married. Every word of the Quranic text is meticulously chosen, chiseled and placed by the All-Wise Himself. They carry God's fingerprint and are the signs of God and yet the spiritually jaundiced. Ask for a sign. What signs? They mean some special kinds of signs or miracles such as their own foolish minds dictate. Everything is possible for God, but God is not going to humor the follies of men or listen to their false demands. He has sent his messenger to explain his signs clearly and to warn them of the consequences of rejection. Is that not enough? The trend of their demand is generally as follows. In specific terms, they ask that he, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, put a ladder up to heaven and bring down a book from God in their very sight. Then we would believe, they said, or ye see the mountain yonder, turn it into gold. Then we would believe, or make streams to gush out in the desert. Then we would believe. Now listen to the soft, sweet reasoning of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam against the unreasonable and skeptical demands of the mushriks. Do I say to you, verily I am an angel? Do I say to you, verily in my hands are the treasures of God? Only what is revealed to me do I follow. Listen further to the most dignified reply he is commanded by his Lord to give the unbelievers. Qul innamal ayatu indallah Say, O Muhammad, the signs, miracles are indeed with Allah. وَإِنَّمَا أَنَا نَزِيرٌ مُبِينٌ And most certainly I am only a clear warner. Holy Quran, Surah An-Kabut, Chapter 29, Verse 50 In the following ayah, the Holy Prophet is made to point to the Holy Qur'an itself as an answer to their hypocritical demand for some special kind of signs or miracle, for which their foolish pagan mentality craved, for indeed all miracles are signs, and it is their disbelief, their skepticism, their lack of faith which motivates their request for a sign. They are asked to look at the Qur'an and again look at the Qur'an. Awalam yakfihim. Is it not enough for them that we have sent down to thee, O Muhammad, the book, Al-Qur'an, which is rehearsed to them, verily, in it, this prospicious book, is a mercy and reminder to those who believe. Holy Quran, Surah An-Kabut, Chapter 29, Verse 51 Two Proofs As proof of the divine authorship and the miraculous nature of the Holy Quran, two arguments are advanced by the Almighty Himself. One, that we, God Almighty, have revealed to you, O Muhammad, the book to you who art absolutely an unlearned person, an Ummi prophet, one who cannot read or write, one who cannot sign his own name. Let Thomas Carlyle testify regarding the educational qualifications of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One other circumstance we must not forget, that he had no school learning, of the thing we call school learning none at all. Thomas Carlyle Moreover, the Divine Author, God Almighty Himself, testifies to the veracity of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam claim that he could never have composed the contents of the Holy Qur'an. He could not have been its author. وَمَا كُنْتَ تَتْلُو And thou, O Muhammad, was not able to recite a book. مِنْ قَبْلِهِ مِنْ كِتَاب Before this book came. وَلَا تَخُطْهُ بِيَمِينِكَ Nor art thou able to transcribe it with thy right hand. إِذَا الْلَرْتَابَ الْمُقْتِلُونَ In that case, indeed, 
what the talkers of vanities have doubted. Holy Quran, Surah Ankabut, Chapter 29, Verse 48 The author of the Quran is reasoning with us that had Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam been a learned man and had he been able to read and write then in that case the babblers in the marketplaces might have had some justification to doubt his claim that the Holy Quran is God's word. In the event of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being a literate person, the accusation of his enemies that he had probably copied his book Al-Quran from the writings of the Jews and the Christians, or that perhaps he had been studying Aristotle and Plato, or that he must have browsed through the Torah, the Zabur and the Injil, and had rehashed it all in a beautiful language, might have carried some weight. Then the talkers of vanities might have had a point. But even this flimsy pretense has been denied to the unbeliever and the cynic, a point hardly big enough to hang a fly upon. 2. The book? Yes, the book itself carries its own evidence, proving its divine authorship. Study the book from any angle. Scrutinize it. Why not take up the author's challenge if your doubts are genuine? أَفَلَا يَتَتَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ Do they not consider the Qur'an with care? وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ Had it been from other than Allah, لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافٌ كَثِيرًا They would surely have found therein much discrepancy. Holy Qur'an, Surah Nisa, Chapter 4, Verse 82 Consistency it is inconceivable that any human author would remain consistent in his teachings and his preachings for a period of over two decades. From the age of 40, when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received his first call from heaven to the age of 63 when he breathed his last, for 23 years the Holy Prophet practiced and preached Islam. In those 23 years, he passed through the most conflicting vicissitudes of life. Any man during the course of such a mission would be forced by circumstances to make honorable compromises and cannot help contradicting himself. No man can ever write the same always, as the message of the Holy Quran is consistent with itself throughout, or is it that the unbeliever's objections are merely argumentative, refractory, against their own better light and judgment? Furthermore, the Holy Qur'an contains or mentions many matters relating to the nature of the universe which were unknown to man before, but which subsequently through evolution and discoveries of science have fully confirmed. A field where an untutored mind would have most certainly lost in wild and contradictory speculations. Self-evident proof Again and again, when miracles were demanded from the Prophet of God by the cynical and frivolous few, he is made to point to the Qur'an, message from high, as the miracle, the miracle of miracles. And men of wisdom, people with literary and spiritual insight, who were honest enough to themselves, recognized and accepted Al-Qur'an as a genuine miracle. Says the Holy Qur'an, Bal huwa ayatum bayinat. Nay, here are signs self-evident. In the hearts of those endowed with knowledge. And none but the unjust reject our signs. Holy Quran, Surah Ankabut, Chapter 29, Verse 49. End of Chapter 1.